What's going on? Tyson McGuffin here. Christmas is right around the corner. You know I'm on Cameo. You know where to find me. If you want me to put together a special message for somebody extra special or uh, maybe some pickleball education or have me take my shirt off, uh, you know where to find me. What's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin. Welcome to the McGuffin Show. We are on episode 28 here. Uh, happy to be back. Just got back from uh, Quinn's Hot Springs in Paradise, Montana. Was not too shabby, uh, even though that water smells pretty eggy, if you ask me. In this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, Dreamland being a hub for top players, NML, uh, through a little shade at Freestyle Boys and Irina over the Braverman controversy. Camp Corner standout players for 2021 and 2022 players to watch out for and uh, Sports Corner. Let's get started talking about uh, talking about uh, players heading down to Dreamland. So from what it sounds like, uh, it sounds like you know Ben after school here pretty soon, and Colin is going to be moving down there. Uh, players that are uh, down there full time as of now is uh, Deckel Nunnery, uh, Vivian David, uh, DJ Young just left. Uh, Southern Cal and moved to move to uh, Dripping Springs. There's not a whole lot going on in Dripping Springs. Uh, T Dub Thomas Wilson is pretty close to there. Uh, sounds like Gucci Zane maybe moving down there. And um, yeah, so you know if you if you don't have a family, if you don't have kids, and pickleball is your is your main career, um, you got nothing on or you got uh, you know nothing else holding you down. Why the heck not? You have one time to be young. Um, all these players have a ton of upside. And so, um, yeah, if I wasn't in a position where I had four kiddos and, and, uh, you know, my wife had a business here and, and we were, we were, uh, uh, locked down just with, you know, uh, just with kids and businesses, then yes, I would put myself in a, uh, better surrounding where there's a lot more upside as far as players. Um, I just had a conversation this morning with a good buddy of mine, Thew, who I played college tennis with back in the day. Uh, he lives in L uh, lives in LA now and uh, teaches tennis down there. He's been down there for uh, I don't know, shoot, seven or eight years. Cool dude, but came to the dark side about two or three years ago. Now he is a full time pickle junkie. He still teaches plenty of tennis, um, but uh, uh, anyhow, I kind of got him on the pickleball train. He, he's home for uh, he's home for break right now. He's from Coeur d'Alene. So, but yeah, I was just talking to him this morning about you know upside and how you kind of look at certain players and you say, Hey, this, you know, uh, this player has upside because they're, you know, in a, in a location where there's, uh, players they can train with, they can feed off of that stuff. Um, I mean, you know, uh, it, you can only make, or I guess you can only do so much in tournaments. Most of the changes, most of the heavy lifting, most of the, uh, heavy load of, um, making new changes, uh, adding new tools in your, in your toolbox, uh, feeling uncomfortable in practice all revolves around being in a location where you have better players. Um, so, you know, I, I do not uh, have that option, you know, of having, uh, having better players in my area. I've, I've kind of learned to uh, cope with it and, and uh, be a bit more creative in practice so I can feel pressure and I can put myself in positions where, uh, you know, maybe the uh, scoring has changed around or, um, we just modify, modify the drills or modify the game. So I feel more pressure. I have to do more work or whatever, but smart, you know, I, I think with where the sport is going, um, you know, uh, like I mentioned previously, if you have nothing to hold you down and this is your full-time career and you're, you know, really looking to, um, up your game, surround yourself with, with, a with a bunch of high level players, get your butt down to dripping Springs and see Mr. Coon. And uh, check that place out because um, it's a it's a great area. Obviously, obviously with all those players um, to get better and to be working on your game. So I, I may have to uh, take some trips down there and uh, beat up on those boys in in uh, Dripping Springs, if you know what I mean. But uh, 
Um, okay, next thing here, we're talking about uh, NML's blog, and they did uh, they did an entire blog uh, about Irina and uh, the whole Braverman controversy. So pretty interesting. Um, uh, obviously, last podcast I I mentioned that I don't feel like it's right for for players to be pulling out last minute. Um, because they don't want the loss to go on their, uh, you know, duper profile or, or duper, duper stat sheet. Um, I don't think that's right at all. And, uh, you know, just with my wrestling background and, and kind of the way that I look at sports and the way that I respect, uh, you know, certain athletes on the, on the tour, uh, I, I just, I would never do that. I don't ever see myself doing that. Uh, and I just think it's flat out wrong. And, um, you know, and for Irina to be sponsored by Duper and for Braverman to work for Duper, uh, makes it that much more interesting if you ask me. But, uh, anyhow, they, they went in, they essentially said that, uh, Slim and Gritty said that they are not going to be watching the Freestyle Boys podcast anymore because uh, they were making fun of the fact that it was funny that Irina pulled out uh, last second, so that loss didn't go uh, didn't go against her. Um, and um, yeah, like what I I mean I. Didn't talk too much about it last pod episode, um, but uh, yeah, I, I you know I don't think it's great for the best player in the world to be laughing at the fact that somebody pulled out last second. And, um, or in the last second, somebody pulled out at 10, seven game two, because they didn't want their loss to go on their, go on their duper stat sheet. Um, you know, Benny's also sponsored by duper. So, uh, yeah, I just, I just think, um, um, I think it's, it's wrong, um, to be doing things like that. I think we should, we need to all be better, um, you know, better, uh, better on the court, better off the court. And there's plenty of, uh, plenty of situations or plenty of examples where I need to be better as well. So I am, I'm definitely not perfect by any means, but this type of stuff, we have to have better etiquette. We have to have more respect for players on tour and this type of stuff just can't be happening. So, um, that is my take on it. Um, Okay, so uh, next thing here we're going to be chatting about is uh, just took the fam to this uh, little area in Montana. It's called Paradise. Uh, there is literally nothing in this town, nothing. But there is a pretty cool hot springs. Um, there's like seven pools all kind of bunched together. Uh, there was, uh, there was uh, hot spring pools. There was just salt pools. Uh, there, was the, there was a cold plunge as well. So, um, yeah, it was great. We ended up driving over there. Uh, we rented a car because, uh, it was pretty snowy. Have, have you been watching any of my stories? Uh, it's been dumping snow the last, last week or so, and there's been a bunch of snow that is still on the ground. So we ended up renting a, uh, a big SUV, drove over there. Um, if you guys have not driven over a couple of, uh, passes with some snow on it, it's definitely not fun. So I was probably driving 30, 35, 40 miles an hour, uh, on a 60 for about an hour and a half. Um, so instead of it taking us two hours, it took us about four hours, but, um, uh, yeah, kids had a great time. We, uh, stayed in a cabin, uh, the restaurant, there was like, there was one restaurant and then one tavern. Uh, it was right by the clubhouse and it's all kind of gathered the, the clubhouse, the restaurant, the, the pools and the cabins are cabins are down the way. But, um, yeah, we would just kind of bounce back and forth from having breakfast, go back to the pools for a couple hours, go have lunch, go back to the pools. And so we, we, we were really only at our cabin, uh, early morning and then late night. So we, uh, swam like we were fish for a couple days. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty crampy, uh, you know, just with, uh, uh, you know, being in the hot springs and being in that water, uh, for you know, anywhere from two to three hours a day. Uh, there was, there was times over the, over the weekend where like my calves and my, in the back of my quads were camping or my, uh, were uh, cramping. So, uh, um, yeah, no, it's just, you know, uh, note here, if you guys are going to, you know, take a relaxing weekend, get some recovery in and go check out some hot springs, uh, just make sure you drink lots of water. And, and Meg and I, uh, may have been mixing alcohol, 
uh, with not much water, if you know what I mean. And, uh, and that can lead to some cramps. But no, we had a great time. We swam four to six hours a day, ate a bunch, ate like kings. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, it was awesome. You know, it's like 30 degrees outside, dumping snow. We're jumping around from pool to pool. I'm throwing the kids in the pool. Um, wrestled the kids around and luckily our kids are, uh, pretty easy and they were, they were content with swimming, swimming every day, uh, playing some card games back at the cabin, having some good food and, and, um, you know, doing it all over again. So we would, we would definitely do that, uh, do that vacation again. I think next year, uh, kind of around the same time, right before Christmas, we're going to spend four or five days there, but take the whole family. And, um, yeah, so we are, uh, fans of uh, hot springs, but if they could just control the smell a bit more, uh, and and you know, uh, if they could uh, uh, control the smell a bit more, and just maybe you know, I, I honestly I felt like there was there was deviled eggs being shoved up my nose when I was in one of those pools, and so if you can if you can get over the smell, you're totally fine. And to be honest, after about an hour of being in being in a hot spring, uh, the smell goes away, but it's definitely not pleasant when you, when you first walk in. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of hot tubs and I'm a fan of hot tubs that are 105. Uh, I've never been in a, uh, body of water that was 106. So the, uh, hot springs was 106. And so that was, that was the pool that I was hanging out in. Um, yeah, there was, you know, four or five different hot springs. They were all different temperatures and then a couple of saltwater pools. But um, so I was kind of bouncing back and forth from the uh, 106 hot spring and the 58 degree cold plunge. Hot and cold is a good way to get your day started. Um, something that we are going to get uh, for the house is a cold plunge that's going to be located on our deck right next to the hot tub. So in the mornings, I can wake up. Uh, jump in the hot tub, go back and forth from the hot tub in the cold plunge, uh, and then walk over to the gym, get all my work in, head to the courts, come home, do all my, do all my recovery stuff, and then my day gets started with the kids. So um, we're going to be locked and loaded with a, with a recovery house. Um, okay, so camps for 2022, as you guys have seen, uh, get over to my website, do yourself a favor, get signed up for a TM camp in 2022, um, come get yourself MacGuffin, uh, best curriculum and, and best, uh, uh, best teaching pros out there. Uh, so if you want to come see K-Mac and I, or maybe come see John Sperling, who's much cooler, uh, than I and, uh, Kami McGregor, who is cooler than all of us. Uh, get yourself signed up for a TM camp in 2022. We have partnered up with PPA. We have partnered up with Chicken and Pickle. And we've partnered up with Discovery Resort. So um, do yourself a favor. And um, we're going to have some uh, Black Friday deals coming up for, uh, for, for Christmas, obviously. So um, be looking for that information on my social media pages. This next portion of the episode, we're going to be showing you a boiler room breakdown and want to give a big shout out to Selkirk TV for providing this content. Okay, so uh, first point we got here, uh, Ben and Colin playing Ryan I, and this is in the finals of the Orange County Cup in San Clemente. Okay, Benny drives his third, works his way in, looking to speed up at me, which is kind of a usual thing. He likes to likes come at me pretty early, sucker. Um, so we're moving the ball around here. You see, we see Collins working inside foot. Colin does a very good job of kind of picking on that inside foot, whether it's my inside foot or it's Rise, but he's just kind of getting us, getting us fighting over that ball. Uh, classic uh, forehand to forehand battle, as uh, Colin and I tend to do. He's got, he's got the best of me the last, last couple times, sucker. And look at the point, stupid. Stupid! Okay, okay, let's, let's, just, let's just take this thing back here. <clears throat> let's take this thing back. So Colin and I are obviously grinding cross court, okay? So I decide to reset to Ben. Ben fires. Now it's Rye versus, Rye versus two. Um, quite the, quite the hand speed battle. And as we see here, Benny does such a good job 
And hang on, hang on, real quick here. And so it's kind of the, honestly, it's a, it's a lot of the same f formation. I'm just gonna pause it here real quick. So um, you'll 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 notice anytime that Rye, anytime that Rye goes at Colin, uh, Ben tends to slide over to assist Colin, and kind of the same same thing on my side. Anytime Ben comes at me, Rye. Uh, decides to slide over and look to assist me in the middle so he can be pinching. So, as we see here, I reset to Ben, Ben comes at me. And we got this crazy hand speed battle going on. And uh, Benny does Benny, if you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, the transition from forehand to backhand and how he's able to keep it short and tight and really keep it in front of him. Watch this. Yep. And, you know, uh, can't give this guy enough credit, but something that he has uh, done in the last year and a half is is add that two-hander. You know, he adds that two-hander, keeps it very short and tight. Does a good job finding some spacing in those hand speed battles. Um, okay, so let's point. Let's move on to point number two here. So Divier Smith and Nunry and Bar. Okay, there there comes a speed up. This point is ridiculous. Nice. Jay gets one down. Uh-huh. I'm going to have the pleasure of playing with uh, playing with Jay next year. Only if he's playing points like this, so. <laughs> okay, so we just kind of have a, a long grinding, dinking point, waiting for the right ball. Yeah, yeah, not not too shabby, Patty. Okay, so I'm gonna slow this down here. Okay, and it's gonna stop that there. So, uh, as we see here, Deckel does this pretty well. In uh, last episode, I was talking about this. Um, more so in mix, but I like when the guy, obviously if the guy can do more damage with, with his fourth and he's and he's more aggressive out of the air with his forehand versus the girl's backhand, I like when the when the guy is able to take 60% of the court and essentially, uh, you know, just, just with this type of shot, when somebody's dropping and coming in, I like when the guy slides over, takes that ball off the girl's inside foot. And as we see here, um, you know, Deckel creates a lot of pressure. Deckel's a big guy. He's able to get in there. But um, uh, Deckel can do more with that forehand than Nenry can do with this backhand. And and just as far as image and as far as presence, Deckel's just such a bigger presence. And there's, and there's value behind being big in the middle and making yourself big and visually putting pressure on your opponent and getting them looking at things they don't have control of. Okay, so Deck takes that. As we see, uh, Deck just kind of slides that. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back there real quick because I was mentioning that, that Deck can obviously do more. But, you know, in this sort of scenario, it's it's an aggressive drop. There's, a, you know, Deck can only do so much. So he just resets that. Okay, and we're gonna stop it right here. Okay, time. So, uh, what we're looking at here is, is we're looking at, uh, we're looking at Patty speed up. So, as we see, Pat was dinking out of the air, but a common thing that I see and a common thing that we, um, you know, kind of mention as we're teaching, uh, if you come to a TM Signature PB camp, is that when you see added hand activity and somebody's at the kitchen line, and you see that added hand activity out of the air, something sneaky is probably gonna be coming or something hot is gonna be coming. So. You know, Pat went from like a parallel, uh, you know, ready position or a parallel paddle position where it was parallel with the top of the tape. And then he got the tip down and I call that tip down technique. Uh, or we can say that his tip was getting towards six o'clock. Or what my dad used to tell me in wrestling is he, he used to say, Tyson, peck her down, brother. Peck her down. So, um... As we see, Patty has got some added hand activity. Looks like he's dropping the head of the paddle. Usually with that, it's gonna be a backhand roll. So let's see here. Backhand roll. Nunnery does a good job of defending. Okay. Looks like Pat was lost in the middle, but something he something he did here, because he, he was lost. So he's lost, he pops this ball up, lost in the middle. 
Okay, get back, perfect. So many times I see players hang out in transition. <clears throat> get your butt back, get back to square one, and see if you can live to fight another day, if you know what I mean. So, uh-huh. Have trust in Jay's defense, very good. Very good, very good. Uh, and and I, would, I would say that if your level of defense isn't all that great, if you're in transition and, and you pop one up, always give yourself more time. Someone that can defend a little better can probably get away with hanging out in transition. If that makes sense. Ooh, Deco UZ. So both, so on that, on these last two, so on these last two dinks here, so this is a ball that Deck is known to speed up on. He's got his feet around it, and the ball's kind of sitting in front of him. He decides to dink. And then and Pat resets the nunnery. Nunnery is known to speed up here too off the bounce. That that tip down speed up. Nunnery, nunnery decides to uh, to not speed up and just uh, dink back. Pat speeds up. Now we got a hand speed battle. And look at the look at the ball trajectory. Or, or look at the ball trajectory. Look at the tracking ability. Pat is not known to hit out balls, baby. Okay, you will never know until you let a couple go. And there's nothing more difficult in pickleball than to be sizing a, another dude up in a hand speed battle, sizing him up, fighting swords, right? And to uh, to be fighting away and to pull off and to actually trust your tracking ability. Very, very difficult when you have that high tempo uh, pattern going on and, uh, and to be, you know, laying off it and trust that you can... Let that ball go long. Nice. Okay. I remember. I remember this final. Uh huh. Yeah. Get your ass over there, Tyson. Get moving. Make yourself useful. Oh yeah. There's my girl right there. She was so loud. This lady. Don't know what her name was. Don't know how much she had to drink, but she was getting after it. She was, and and this this men's final, I I believe was at like 11:30 in the afternoon. So she was getting after it pretty early. Um, let me go back here. Okay, so you know something that happened to Ryan and I a lot towards. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, all of this year because all last year I would take most of the drops. So. Um, Last year, I would take most of the drops. I'd let Ryde disconnect. We all know that, you know, he has one of the best poaches in the game or one of the best bakes in the game. He can make himself big. Uh, he can kind of get an eye formation. He doesn't mean to, but he can get an eye formation to a certain degree and just kind of play singles and, and be a bully with that disconnect. <coughs> <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> so this year, I did not see a lot of drops. Most of the drops went to Ryde. This ball here, <clears throat> Jay came at me pretty hard. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> watch this. Watch this. Watch my body language. And I'm going to slow this down. Oh, oh my God. That ball's got some pace. So Jay took a full cut at me. I was able to block that thing back. Now I'm on my horse. Get over there. And to be honest, this was a huge momentum turner. 11-8, it was tight. 7-all, it's tight. We won this point, and it got us over the hump. Um, there's usually one or two, you know, points late in games, if it's tight, where if you win those points, uh, it's a huge momentum turner. Call those momentum points. So hang on to that stuff. And if you win a point like that, nothing wrong with bringing the energy and letting your opponents know, hey, uh, I'm going to use that, and I can feel the momentum, and things are in my favor, and I'm going to let you know. Uh, you don't. You don't have to look at them. You don't have to. You don't have to. You know, look and bark. Uh, you can. Uh, you know, you can do it the professional way. Barking is okay. Just don't do it at your opponents. Okay, don't. 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 Do it to yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. I uh, there was. There was some. There was some chaos going on. Not chaos, but there was some. Some weird stuff going on at nationals with. Uh, with. Uh, I'm just going to say it was a mixed doubles match. It was the bronze medal match. We all know who it is. And, and somebody was bullying my, my, my partner. My partner was dishing it back a little bit, but as, as she should. And, um, you yeah, know, just, you know, for a, for a, for, for a dude to be that old, to be, uh, 
you know, <clears throat> to to let a 14 year old get under his skin. Uh, it just comes to show what that what that dude's character is about. If you know what I mean? Not a fan. I don't think I'll ever be a fan. And that's just that's just my opinion. I, I just uh, I, th I think there's better ways to compose yourself, and uh, you should act like a true professional when you're on the court. Not a fan. All right, we got ourselves a Parento Jansen point. I was coaching during this match, and I know exactly what this point is. And talk about a momentum point down the line. Of course, I remember that. I mean, come on. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? That was the point that turned things around. Okay. Lob. Little backhand flick. Punch it down the line. Come on. Okay. Take the return up the line. Push her back. She rolls one. Dump it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I mean, that's a that's a striper. That's a that's a big girl two hander. If you ask me, that is a big girl two hander at at nine eight game five. I mean, come on, it doesn't get more clutch than that. On the dead run, spank it. How you like them apples? Even though I don't like saying that because Leia's my girl. Leia's my girl. All right, this is Red Rock. This was in between the snow. This is crazy. You know, the crazy thing, too, is that look at all the people watching. It was like 35 degrees out. It's in St. George, Utah. And, and I mean, out of, out of all the venues that we traveled to, this was the most dedicated, uh, you know, fan or, or viewer. And it's funny. I mean, they were there consistently all day, every day through the snow. And it's cold. Um, okay, so let's let's get off of get off of that talk. Let's talk about the actual point. Jesse drives the backhand line, and and why I like her driving it line is because Luce Lucy does what? Lucy hits the return cross court. Uh, we we see them unwinding. There's some open space. It's pretty cold out. Ball the the Dura ball is flying. As we all know, if it's 35 degrees, it's flying and it's cracking. So. Uh, drove, Jesse's in transition, playing some D, you know, just like last point we said, hey, you know, if you don't, if you don't trust your D, buy yourself some time. So Jesse doesn't go all the way back. Why? Because, you know, she's, uh, she's got a lot of, a lot of trust in her defense. So she slides middle, Catherine gets pulled out. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm just going to say this. So lower level players, it's it's a little tricky to have this odd formation like this. Uh, you know, this is something that like Yates and Johns did a ton. This is something that Ryan and I did a ton. This is something that Colin and Ben do a ton. If you have somebody that is a that is a monster, uh, that likes to poach, that likes to be aggressive, that likes their hands, you can you can essentially, you know, as Catherine's back scrambling. Uh, since Catherine probably has a, not a better soft game, but Catherine can probably scramble better than Jesse. Hence, Catherine plays singles. Um, you know, uh, Jesse, Jesse has faith in Catherine's defense. So Jesse is kind of creeping up, knowing that Catherine's drop is going to set the tone to her getting up and getting established. Or, you know, Ryan I's example would be, you know, I'm back. And Rye is just kind of sitting middle, and he's and he's waiting, and he's waiting to to uh, pounce if if they were to float one up with their four, six, eight, whatever, right? Okay. Something else I like too is is you know, so look, she's she's back scrambling, she's back scrambling. Okay, high swing, get in. So if you if you don't send that message, if you just stay blocking and stay soft in transition. Simone's never gonna feel pressure and she's never gonna second guess uh, you know her her role when she's hitting a four six eight tenth whatever because she knows that uh, Catherine or Jesse's not gonna swing in transition so it's necessary uh, if the ball is high enough in yellow and green and you're comfortable uh, and your weights going forward it is necessary to send a message and to be swinging out uh, every now and then just know that when you swing you need to have your weight going forward times when you should not swing is when it's in red or when the when the person in front of you has been eating your lunch and beating you head to head you should definitely not be swinging uh, or if your weight's going back but this point went from 
Went from defense to offense, back to neutral. This is why women's pickleball is so much better to watch than men's pickleball. I'm going to say that again. This is why women's pickleball is so much better to watch than men's pickleball. <coughs> if you guys watch Cal, if you guys watch our, our, our men's final at Nationals, Ryan and I playing J-Dub and Callan, I mean, for gosh sakes, we're having 30, 40 ball dinking rallies with a Franklin ball, <coughs> and nobody can speed up because the ball wasn't, wasn't bouncing up very high, and it's tough to speed up. And so... Um, his, I was at peak this morning and there was a guy named Kevin he used to take lessons from me and he's like dude he's like that was the most boring match to watch he's like there was no activity he's like I'd much rather watch women and I said hey I said women are you know, much more enjoyable than uh, men and they bring a little feistiness why not the guys are just the guys are too nice to a certain degree there's, there's some that are not there's some that aren't um, okay let, let's run this here so that was that was a little risk uh, a little risky by Jesse to throw, so I mean, you see here. So Jesse just flat out. I mean, doesn't doesn't give it away, but takes it takes a backhand off the bounce, in which I don't. So look, so, uh, but but it's it's coming off it's coming off Lucy's drop that's a little high and it's cold out. I'm sure that Dura is jumping up a little bit or bouncing high. Uh, women's point here. You got Simone, Lucy, and Catherine and Callie. Got my got my girl Callie. Kelly's rocking the Fila shoes, it seems like. And it seems like Catherine's taking that ball off her inside foot. Oh, look at the defense. Come on. Like it. Okay, she's taking her time, taking her time, taking her time. Swings and then gets one down. Here she comes. Here comes the hands battle. Speed up. Oh my gosh, just stop. And these points are, are drawn out. Defense to offense. Boom. Look at the hands by Callie. It's about as good as it gets right here. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. The point's still going. Speed up. <sighs> okay. Let's uh let's 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 run that through. Okay, so we see Simone uh, banging the third. She's dropping, she's coming in. Taking her time, resetting middle. You know, I I like this. You know, she's she's in transition. She's in transition, and she's just resetting middle. You know, big target. Um, you know, it's the eye candy part of the court. Uh, there's not much risk visually. It doesn't put pressure on you because you have a big target to work with. And if you're not afraid of Catherine's forehand, that's totally fine. Okay, so again, she's she's still resetting middle, probably trying to get Catherine and Callie to fight over that middle ball or to fight over the uh, ball off of Callie's left foot. Uh, Simone speeds up and then cleans. Okay, high ball. Okay, and and I mean, as we as we see here, all women are using two hands when they're on defense, and you know just. Just the ability to really keep it short and tight, to not overdo it, to use that added hand as a as a stabilizer, and just to have more control. I mean, this is a, this is a prime example of how how the two hander can get that done. Speed up, okay. And let's let's take a look at that speed up again. Okay, okay. So a little little off the bounce, short and tight. Okay, and then let's let's, let's uh, see what she does after. Speeds up, zone two, or I guess right at the belly button. Callie pops it up. There comes the overhead. Callie buys herself time, blocks, get one, gets one down. And then right when they see, Lucy has to take it off the bounce. That was a pretty good block, and it was on Lucy's left foot. Right as they see, Lucy has to take a step back and take it off the bounce. They're in. They're up and established. Okay. And so what... what uh, got that ball to pop up was this inside foot dink. You see that? Again. Watch this. So this is an aggressive push towards Callie's left foot. Pops it up. Speed up. Clean up. And Callie pops it up again, but still gets one down. And they're right back in it. Little bait in the middle. Bait in the middle. Lucy goes for it. And they, and they leave it. Um... Something that I want the viewers to think about is that when you speed up, you don't always have to clean up off your speed up. And probably, I would say this is, it's tougher from the attacking side. 
it's tougher to leave balls on the attacking side versus the uh, counterattacking side. It's easier to have somebody speed up at you and to just leave a counter. It's more difficult to have some to 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 have you speed up and then someone counter and then you leave the recounter after you just built up the courage and you have the energy and and you're, you know, and the blood is flowing after you sped up. Plain and simple, it's tough to bring a hard ball and then lay off than it is to see a hard ball come in and lay off on the first one. So know that you don't have to, you don't have to fight your life away if you're insecure about your hands, if you never leave any out balls. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of value and um, you can really, uh, you know, force your opponent to second guess their speed ups or to second guess their hands or to second guess their drive just with the ability of letting a few go. <clears throat> All right. Um, this is the winner's bracket final. Nationals. Okay. Let's check it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think uh, the lob is coming. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Out of the air, off the bounce. Okay, Callum's gonna get it done. Slide it. Slide it. Where am I going? Where am I going? Uh, huh. Slap. J Dub. J Dub. Okay, I'm gonna leave that point. All right, we got a, got a mixed point here. This was the Orlando final at about 8.30 at night. It was kind of funny because uh, Benny and I played our, uh, Benny and I played our singles final right right before this, and it was late at night. Okay, and just because I was blabbing the whole time, I'm gonna start over. Okay. So, uh, Rai, Rai likes to do this, whether he's playing with, you know, his sister, Catherine, um, seen him do it with Callie, but he likes to play the right and kind of use that Use that two-hander in the middle. Jay's, you know, doing his usual trickery. Not too bad. Look at look at Jay's face. <laughs> I, I've never seen that. Hang on, hang on. This is good. This is good. Okay, Catherine gets one down. Okay. Yes, he's grinding, using that, uh, using that slice, that slice push. Jay slides, Catherine's on it. How does he poke that back? Okay, playing some D here. Another example of, hey, if you pop a ball up, I mean, look at their core position. We've, we've been talking about this. We've been talking about this, okay? Look, ball gets, ball gets popped up. Okay, buy himself time, buy himself time, buy himself time. Throw one more lob up. Now the points, literally, back to somebody's hitting a third ball and the returning team is up and established. So uh, that was a pretty sick ATP. Uh, the principle or the, the main focus of that last point was if you're playing defense, if you're scrambling, if you're in trouble, get back to the baseline, buy yourself some time. As we see, even the pro players do it. Okay, and uh, you know, I, I would say in a good majority of these points, there's been more defense than there has been offense. Okay. Okay, Rye pops this up, Jay slides over. Okay, and back. Watch this, watch this. Okay, hang on. So, so uh, Jesse just threw up a lob, threw up a lob because she didn't have any time. She didn't have any time. Okay, now Jay's cut short on time. You can either lob or you can drive. But he but he drives, he gets one down. That drive enhanced his next ball. Now they're back in it, right? And then Rye takes a little slice of the pie. Uh-huh, come on. Look at, look at Jay's face. <laughs> okay, so uh, got Waters Waters, Irvine Tereschenko. I believe this was in Mesa. Uh, back in February. This is one of the, one of the first PPA tournaments. Okay, grinding. Grinding at its finest. Typical Waters uh, special. 
you know, drive a couple times, throw up a few lobs, but there's really no rush to get in. And and they they will take more time than other teams with with getting in, <laughs> and really let Anna Lee uh, just kind of just kind of run around and let her let her do her thing, uh, you know, some uh, type of stuff that that the Newmans do, if you know what I mean. Um, Anna Lee acts as a acts as a big presence. Jeez. Point here. Anna Lee acts as a big presence and is just able to kind of move and and cause some ruckus from there. Yeah, one of the biggest overheads in pickleball right there. Um, Jesse can uh, hit a plastic ball pretty stinking hard. Okay, let's see here. Uh, serve to Jesse. Jesse goes inside foot. Again, she goes back inside foot. Drive, drive. We see Anna Lee drop. She comes in. Speed up. Jesse was more than ready. Now they're now they're back defending again. Now they're back defending, pop one up, buy themselves some time. So, you know, what's what's kind of interesting is that through all the points that we've seen here, and and there's been we've we've seen nine points, but let's say let's say half of the points have been in this type of this type of situation where we see one team back scrambling, trying to defend other team at the at the kitchen line uh, with that controlled aggressive mentality. But something that we not we have not seen um from the returning team or from the team that's up and established is a short little trustworthy dump volley which could solve all this so as we see here uh, at the professional level top level and and i am i am guilty of it as well i sometimes don't trust it or i don't see it or i'm more so focused on hey from a percentage standpoint my core positioning is better uh, the likelihood of me winning this point should be pretty high, so I'm going to stick with just plan A. And plan A is pushing them back, right? But rarely ever do we see somebody dump one. Um, and, you know, take a look at all the players with a good dump volley. Simone, Ben, uh, Stone's got a good little dump volley. Matt Wright's got a, a beauty little dump volley. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're pushing them back, or let's say if you hit a really big roll volley and you push them back, uh, I would hit the dump volley on the side of the person that isn't as mobile or isn't as quick. So in this, you know, this example, love, love me some Lee Waters, played with Lee all year, but I would assume Anna Lee, uh, his first step may be a little quicker than mom. So Jesse should be dumping that thing over to who? Over to mom. Okay. And why they're dropping to Jesse I, I don't know because Jesse's a lot more aggressive out of the air and off the bounce. Maybe maybe not off the bounce, but uh, out of the air for sure. Okay, I, Irina does a good job of scrambling, getting one down. Took herself some time. Okay, now we have a uh, backhand to backhand battle. She pops one up, punches one. And here it comes. Yep, overhead. Nope, this one. With some angle. That usually does it. That usually does it. So, um, you know, two options when you're when you're at the kitchen line and your opponents are back defending, and you feel like they're making the court look really small because they're defending so well. You've got to ask yourself: Have I not taken enough risk with my roll to really get angle and get the ball off the court, or have I not taken enough risk with my overhead where I've gotten the ball off the court? Um, and then the, the other thing is, uh, you know, have I not? Uh, uh, try to hit any little dump volleys and keep them honest. So either angle it off, hit a big girl overhead, or use that little uh, use that little dumper. Okay, next portion of the episode, we're going to talk about two topics, standout players for 2021 and uh, players to watch for in 2022. So first and foremost, um, I've spoken a lot about this guy, and he's beat me a couple times this year. Um, and he tends to waddle a little bit when he walks. He's got some pretty good hands. Uh, he uses Ben's paddle. He uh, may have a layer of hair uh, on, his, uh, on his back. I, I do not believe he uses Manscaped. And um, he usually has his left hand chilling on his left hip. We all know who this is. AJ Kohler. Uh, not only did he play well in men's, he played uh, particularly well in mixed as well. Um, you know, him and him and Lee Whitwell uh, made the final of the APP SoCal. Um, him and him and Leah Jansen beat me a couple times. One time in particular was at the Orlando uh, PPA, 
and uh, another another Matt Wright uh, Shiner, uh, Mr. Wright. Um, I don't know, I mean, just something happened in that bronze medal match, but it was Leia and AJ playing Wright in Kovalova. And from what it sounds like, it sounds like uh, sounds like somebody got verbally abused on the court. Not only a fe- not only uh, not only a female, but the ref got abused as well. And the ref had to step in. Larry, uh, Larry had to step in and really let uh, you know who uh, uh, let him know who his boss. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that Kohler and Jansen should have won the match, and they didn't. And um, uh, anyhow, Kohler's played well in men's. He's played well in mixed. Um, uh, something that I have to bring up. This was this was ridiculous. Uh, ben Ben has heard this story. Uh, this is probably him being being way too generous and uh, probably respecting Ben way too much. But uh, U.S. Open this year, uh, my route could have been a lot easier if AJ could have finished Ben, but he did not. AJ's up 7-1 or 6-1, 7-1, something like that, 6-0, game three, right? And he's he's carving Ben up, playing a bunch of cat and mouse. I, I, I don't know how well Ben was playing. It was on an end court at uh, uh you know at the US Open there were some like batches of courts in the in the back those brand new courts anyhow they were on a back batch on this like on an end court it was packed so i got done with my i don't know quarters <clears throat> and I, I i'm like you know walking over to my little area where the fam's hanging out and i see one of the courts is packed and it's Kohler and Johns and i'm like no way and uh anyhow Kohler's up big in game 3 and Ben starts playing pretty well, and Ben's first point in game three, it's this long, drawn-out cat and mass point, and, and, and Kohler basically uh, uh, gives Ben feedback, and, and Ben gets his first point, and Kohler says, oh my gosh, dude, such a nice point. I'm sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, here, here Kohler is playing the best guy in the world, and he's telling him good shot at six, or now 6-1 game three. Kohler, pipe down, do not say a word, and finish the deal. Seal the deal, get it done, no communication. Uh, that is a sign of a gentleman with a huge heart, and not only is he a stud on the court, but the guy is just a sweetheart. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously he was, he was way too nice in that situation. Ben ended up walking away and then kicked my ass in the finals, damn it. But, uh um, anyhow, yeah, Kohler's got so much upside. Uh, he didn't play, uh, he didn't play well in singles the last portion of the year, but the guy is fearless and, um, probably has, uh, probably has some of the bigger cojones on tour and isn't afraid to test anybody. Um, love me some Kohler. And on top of that, uh, he can, he can juggle and, uh, he's got some comedy, uh, with his videos that he uh, has published on YouTube. Uh, Chet Subaru, Chet. Um, another standout player of 2021 is our girl, Leia Jansen. Uh, can't say enough about her. Mixed women, singles, she's done it all. Uh, she was the legend uh, last year on the APP tour. Her and Lauren Stratman uh, essentially didn't win everything, but won most uh, APP events with women's dubs. Uh, Leia was always you know, in the running of mix as well. Uh, she had that crazy mix final with, uh, uh, she was playing with Jay and they were playing Coop and Navitil, uh, at the Atlanta open APP ended up finishing up at like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, they had, uh, I think Leia and Jay had match points that are up like 14, nine and ended up losing. Anyhow, um, why I, I think of that match is because I remember, uh, I remember seeing Leia and Jay, uh, right after the match got done, there was like a video and maybe it was her interview, but it was humid outside, and Jay was like sweating through his shoes and, and was just a, like a, a, a wet, soggy mess. But there was literally steam, like sweat steam, rolling off of him uh, uh, as they were doing. Yeah, I think they were doing their interview, uh, but it was late night. Uh, anyhow, the girl is as tough as they come. Um, I, I had the uh, privilege of growing up with her and, and kind of getting to know her and her family. And, um, and kind of get to know her story. Pretty cool. Dad was my tennis coach uh, for a couple years growing up. Um, rough, tough mentality. Uh, crusty as could be. But very, very knowledgeable, but doesn't take shit from anybody. And uh, the type of discipline that I that I needed being the youngest of seven, if you know what I mean. 
Um, and then mom played uh, on the Swiss Olympic volleyball team back in the day. All four girls played Division One sports. Crazy athletic family. And um, no, I'm just, I'm super happy for her. I'm happy to, to uh, see what, what she's done with her career uh, this, this last year. I mean, she's totally done a 360 uh, with her health, with, um, you know, uh, uh, with her performance on court, with some of the things that she's cleaning up off the court. And so, you know, just, just can't, can't say enough about that girl. And uh, I look forward to playing with her next year. We're going to have a breakout year, that's for sure. Uh, even though uh, Anna Lee has uh, has gotten Leia's number, and I'm sure she doesn't want to hear that from me, uh, it's very true. Anna Lee's playing at a pretty high level. We all we all know that. I would uh, I would believe that Leia uh, is going to have uh, a, a little something extra next year to compete with uh, with Al. Um, players to watch out for for 2022: J Dub Johnson, Vivian David. Uh, even though I did. Uh, uh, beat up on J Dub a little bit at nationals. Um, the guy's got a ton of upside. He's he's uh, uh, you know Ben like to a certain degree, stoic, and uh, doesn't show a lot of emotion. But he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of game. And uh, uh, the guy, uh, you know, just his his general uh, uh, composure on the court, the way he's able to manage pressure. Um, it, it's not nineteen year old like. Uh, you know, he acts he acts like an adult. And uh, holds himself holds himself pretty high, and it's got a good head on his shoulders. So, um, yeah, happy to see, uh, happy to see, or or just you know, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where his game goes in 2022. But I would assume it's only going to go in the right direction. Vivian David uh, got the got the chance of having Viv on my team at MLP. She went 14 and 0. Uh, the girl is good. She is good. Uh, she does a lot of things well. One thing in particular, she uh, she counters with that two hander. Or actually, I mean, she can she can find a two hand counter. She can find a four hand counter. But uh, there's there's a lot of guys that that want to be bully like and and try to pick apart uh, Viv. And Viv usually waves that finger and says, "Not here, buddy." Okay, get that nonsense out of here because I'm going to clobber that thing up with my with my two hander. Um, she played great at MLP. Um, it, actually, the the first real showing of Viv was 2019 World Pickleball Championships. Uh, that was the year that everybody went. It was like right after Christmas. Terrible timing, but we but we got it done. It rained a, it rained a couple of days. It was like 99% humidity uh, when we played late in the day after it rained. Anyhow, Vivian David played Lucy Kovalova in the in the finals and just beat the snot out of her. And I and I. Uh, and I, uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful of Lucy at all, but it was, it was, it was short and sweet, and uh, she looked good. And after that, all of us were like, "Oh my gosh, is this, is this the new Simonian singles?" And uh, yeah, she just really never, I don't know, uh, never played a lot of singles after, or just didn't care about singles. But um, yeah, it seems like she's put more of her attention and more of her focus into playing doubles. But uh, her and her and Leia obviously played great together at MLP. They ended up uh, going seven and zero, and her and um, her and Zane went seven and zero as well. And right before MLP, this is how I knew our team was going to be good. But we should have freaking won the thing, and at least made the finals. How I knew our team was going to be good was because uh, Leia and Vivian, at, like two weeks before, or maybe a week before uh, MLP, they played Hilton Head, and they ended up winning Hilton Head and beat Catherine and Simone twice in one day. So uh, pretty pretty tough to do. Sports Corner, uh, if you guys watched the last uh, UFC pay-per-view, I think it was 269. Uh, it was insane. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, Amanda Nunez uh, is, does not have the double belt. Uh, she ended up losing to a girl from Spokane, Washington. Julia Pena from Spokane, Washington beat uh, arguably the GOAT uh, in women's MMA. And uh, beat her good. Uh, ended up submitting her. Was was beating her on her feet. Uh, first round, it was it was definitely Amanda. Second round, Pena woke up. Third round, Pena owned. But um, actually, it could have just went to the second round. Anyhow, second round, Pena was was beating up um, Nunez on her feet, and was uh, you know, she's she's not a she's not a big power. Striker, she's more of a volume striker. So she was just touching her up and kind of piecing her up left and right. Next thing, uh, next thing that that happened was uh, Nunez went down, and to be honest, Nunez just quit. Like I, I've never, I've never seen that. And she even said in her in her uh, uh, post match interview that she just gave up. 
she was getting beat on her feet. I, and, and to be honest, I think it was all the pressure of having two belts, being the pound for pound best female MMA fighter and having two belts and nobody's ever done that. Having two belts for like, I don't know, two or three years in a row. Nobody's even been able to touch her. And all of a sudden, yeah, she, she uh, fights this chick and Pena was talking a lot of trash leading up to the fight. That's the big thing is that Pena had no respect for uh, Nunez and was belittling her uh, throughout all the press conferences and showed up and, and brought it. I mean, it's one thing to talk all that and, and, and uh, you know, uh, well, yeah, it's, just, it's, one, it's one thing to talk all that, but it's something totally different to be talking all that and to uh, bring the heat as well. And she, she definitely did that. Another fight to uh, mention was the Oliveira and Poirier fight. Charles Oliveira, uh, pretty cool. His first three years in the UFC, he was 10 and 8. He was 10 and 8. He won, he won 10 fights and he lost 8. The last four years in the UFC, he's 10 and 0 and uh, has uh, defended his belt two times. It just comes to show it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish, baby. Um, but Oliveira, the guy's a stud. He ended up choking out. He's a submission artist, ended up choking out uh, Poirier in the second round. And uh, it's, too, it's too bad Poirier's had two uh, title fights one against Khabib, one against Oliveira, and got choked out twice. So. Um, and my Seahawks yesterday, I mean, they're in it against the Rams. They, they look good. The, the game was tight the whole time. Wilson had DK. I mean, Russ is just not the same guy he used to be. And Russ, we do not trust is what's going on. But, um, DK, uh, DK was open. I mean, two or three times down the field and Russ is like throwing 10 yards short. He's not even close. So, um, I'm still a Seahawks fan. It's just been a tough year. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens next year, but I think we need a better O line. We need, we need, we, we need a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of help, but the three things in particular, uh, uh, new O line, a car, a couple guys, a couple new cornerbacks, and we need a freaking new quarterback. So this will be the last episode of 2021. Um, hope you guys have been joining the MacGuffin show all year. Um, I do not have K-Mac with me today. It's, it's pretty snowy here, and uh, K-Mac was unfortunately not able to make it, but next year he will be, he will be jumping in. Also, too, next year uh, we're going to be adding a couple of guests uh, to the show as well, whether they call in or they're here at, uh, at my home in Coeur d'Alene. But I uh, hope you guys enjoy the content. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is The McGuffin Show. We are on episode 28. Appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to the best YouTube channel in pickleball, The McGuffin Pickleball Club. Yeah,